In this video, we will review the macro value or variable history function. Macro variables are used in custom macro programming, and sometimes this type of programming is referred to as parametric programming. Custom macros are extremely powerful, and the capabilities are almost as endless as the programmer's imagination. I will add a disclaimer here. We accept no responsibility for the use or misuse of programming techniques shown in this video. Examples are shown are for informational purposes only, and viewers are responsible for considering the implications, good or bad, of implementing one or more of the examples. Before making any changes to a part program, the user should be fully aware of potential issues that may cause machine crashes. To determine if your CNC has the functionality of custom macro B programming, press the offset setting key located here, and then the right arrow key until you see a soft key that's labeled macro. Upon pressing the macro soft key, it will display the custom macro variable screen. If you do not see this screen, then you currently do not have the functionality of custom macro. Custom macro B programs are commonly used in probing routines that measure either tools or workpiece dimensions and perform calculations for use in the part program. Since I do not have a probe, I have created a simple program that acquires the program number, the current tool T code, and the current activeware offsets. A note, you should always refer to the operator's manual of your model of CNC and review the parameter settings because they influence how macro variables function. In my example program, I have added five macro variable statements in sequential order just before each tool change. The first four are taken the current values of system variables, and the fifth is a trigger that will be used in MT-Link I. I'm writing to macro variable 511, the system variable 4000, which is equal to the part program number. Macro variable 512 is the active T code. 513, I'm pulling back the active H code and adding 10,000 to it, which is the location of the system variable for the tool length wear offset. And I'm doing the same with the 514 pulling back the radius wear offset value. And then I'm setting 510 to 1, and this is my trigger. Now I will launch the MT-Link-I admin tool and click on the machine setting button. And I will select the machine I wish to work with, which is my RoboDrill number 1 and I will select the tab Macro Variable Getting Condition Definition. You can register up to 1,000 conditions and for one Macro Variable Getting Condition you can collect up to 256 variables. Now I've already set up one Getting Condition so let's take a look at it. I have set a web name. This is what will be displayed on the web URL. I have set my trigger macro variable at 510. I have set the basic macro variable to 511. This is the uh, big first macro variable that it will retrieve the data for. And my capture count will be how many macro variables in sequential order will it obtain the information. And click the set variable name and you can name each one of these macro variables so that it represents what the values are. So here's my first one is 511 which is the basic and I've said to collect four so 511, 512, 13, and 14. Now this is how the function works. MT-Link-I monitors the trigger variable 
and when the CNC part program changes the trigger variable to a 1, MTLink I retrieves the values of the specified macro variables, sets the trigger macro variable back to a 0, and then the MTLink I stores the values of the retrieved variables into the database. Now let's add another condition. So I'll click the button for add. I'll double click on the new condition. I'll rename this. Now in this case, I want to use a different trigger. I've set 510 to be the trigger for tool 1. I'll set 520 to be the trigger for tool 2. I'm still using the same macro command, so this will be 511 and I'll capture 4. Let me click the set variable name and this will be program number T code Radius. Say OK. Then OK. Click Apply. Then OK. And now I will send it to the database and restart the system. Now I'll pause the video briefly here because this just takes a moment. Now that I have finished sending the changes to the database, stopped the system, created the collector setting files, and then restarted the system, I will now sign into the web URL. I'll now go to the macro variable history screen. And on this screen, we'll see that I have my machine robo drill here and this is the first condition that I've already set. Now let me choose my new condition. Now I've let my machine run for about 40 minutes now to collect some data so let me uh, refresh the reporting time then refresh the screen and now I can see my data. I can see the program number that's been run and, and these timestamps are each time the trigger has occurred. So I see the program number, my tool number, and the where offset values at that time. And I can see here that there's a, uh, a trend appearing. And I imagine this type of information could be useful to like a production engineer trying to uh, uh, manage tool life management to see how long his tools are lasting. And you can toggle the display here to display all and refresh and this will bring back the variable numbers as well as the variable values. And depending on which one you have selected at the time that you hit the download button, you can open this up. It's a CSV file and you can open it up in Microsoft Excel or in uh, Office Libre Calc. So I'll format the column cell, the width. So I got my tool offset number two. So this is just one of the many ways that you can uh, set MTLink I up to capture macro variables for data recording. Thank you.